Hello Internet, Seth Skorakowski, and today we're going to talk about Game Master Fudging, which is when a GM changes the game up behind the screen. It doesn't take very long as a GM before you encounter that game where it's just not working the way that you wanted it to, and you think to yourself, well who cares what the dice or the adventure said? I'm overruling that. That's why I have a screen. This is one of the most controversial topics that you're going to encounter in tabletop gaming, because many players and some Game Masters call it cheating. They'll say, if a game master isn't going to respect the rules of the game, then they're bad, a failure, or should never expect their players to be honest either. I disagree. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Fudging. When to do it, when not to do it, how to do it, as well as why or why not to do it. This is a subject that I covered two years ago in one of my old list videos, and that video is now gone. The format of only dedicating you know, two to three minutes but to a particular subject before moving on really didn't work well for it, and I didn't articulate what I wanted to say very well. So I've gone ahead, I've taken down that video, so now we're going to uh, revisit and expand on this topic. Though there was a skit that I used in that original video that I liked, so damn it, I'm going to reuse it because that was actually my favorite part of the old video, so I am going to recycle that bit. So first, is fudging cheating? Can a Game Master cheat? Well, to answer that question, let's first look at what a Game Master is. In my video on the RPG Social Contract, we talked about what a Game Master's roles and responsibilities are. They're to prepare the game and know the rules and handle the technical aspects of it, but first and foremost, their job is to provide a fun experience for the players. Now, clearly their own fun is also a factor in this. I mean, this is a game after all, we do this to have fun, so that is the entire point. But a Game Master should never lose sight of the player's enjoyment. You can have a game master who is an absolute mastery of the rules, has the most detailed and amazing game world, can do a thousand and one NPC voices on command, and is absolutely true to the rules and the dice rolls at all times, but none of that matters if the players aren't having fun. It's just that simple. In another video I talked about player versus game master, or GM versus player, and how that's a bad idea. This is where the game master and the players are working in opposition of one another in order to have some sort of competition in order to win the game. The simple reason why that's a bad idea is if either party's enjoyment comes at the expense of the other parties, then the game as a whole suffers. So with those two things in mind, is GM fudging the dice or the numbers behind the screen cheating? Well, it depends on their motivation. If it's to beat the players, or to stoke their own ego, or to win the game, then yes, it's cheating. But if it's to enhance the experience and increase the enjoyment for everyone at the table, then no, it's not. The definition of cheating requires motivation, gaining an advantage. So if the Game Master's motivation is not to beat the players, but to instead enhance their experience, then fudging can't be cheating. So while the act of fudging itself isn't a real problem, there are a lot of considerations that a Game Master needs to take into account as far as you know how, when, or how often to do it. I and mean, that's actually one of the hardest parts to learn as a Game Master, because fudging incorrectly or fudging too often can create a lot of problems. Fudging the numbers, whether that be in increasing or decreasing an opponent's hit points, their damage output, their armor, the number of opponents, or even what the dice said should be subtle and never overused. How often should I fudge? Well, that's up to you, but it's probably less than you think it is. Let's look at Big Ben, or the Elizabeth Tower clock. For 150 years, this clock has been famous for its reliability. However, it isn't perfect. Early on, the workers figured out that the pendulum sometimes needed a little bit of adjustment, so they set pennies on it. A single coin alters the balance enough to adjust the time by less than a second per day. For 150 years, until they were replaced in 2009 with different coins, the same 10 coins helped adjust the clock. It isn't much, it's very subtle, but it's also necessary. And that's how fudging should be treated. The clockworkers aren't just dumping jars of pennies onto the clock thinking that more is better. No, they're methodical and only using the coins as they're needed. Fudging should be used to make small corrections, and usually these corrections are to your own mistakes as a game master. Make an enemy too strong, then tone it down a bit. Make an enemy too weak, then go ahead and raise it up a little. But at no time should this be overused. The players should always face the risk of failure and should always have the possibility of success. And fudging the numbers, whether it be the dice rolls or anything else, should never remove either of these two possibilities. But most importantly, they should be enhancing the experience and the player's overall enjoyment. In my How to Run a Mystery video, I talked about floating clues, where you move or add a clue to keep the game going. That's a type of fudging the adventure. 
Now let's talk about fudging dice rolls, and for that, let me show you two examples, and you old viewers out there might recognize this. The Black Paladin steps into the chamber before you, his twin swords raised and glowing with magical light. Holy crap, guys! My character's down, man. You're our only hope. I believe in you. Then I draw my axe and I charge. The Black Paladin wins the initiative and... Double critical hits. That's double damage. Well, let's roll damage. Wow. Maximum. So let's see if you uh, carry the three. One by two. 44 points of damage. Oh, damn, I'm dead. That sucked. Oh, I know, I didn't even get a chance. Yeah, what's well, disappointing, but at least we followed the dice, and that is the most important thing. Or we could do this. Then I draw my axe and I charge. The Black Paladin wins the initiative and... He hits you once for seven points of damage. Just seven? Well, it is on. take five points. Damn, I'm dead. Dude, you lasted six rounds of the Black Paladin. That was sick. I was on the edge of my seat. Yeah, I bet it was close to killing him too, wasn't I? Oh yeah, you nearly had him. Well, the dice have spoken, honest and true, but next time we're gonna whoop his butt. Okay, so we have two scenarios, and in both those scenarios the player character died. That is unfortunate. But one of those was an anticlimactic smackdown that was completely unfulfilling for everybody in the room. The other was an edge-of-the-seat battle to the death that left the players happy with a good story and were excited about the next adventure. The Game Master fudged the first attack roll, but after that, the combat played out like normal. Sure, the Game Master could have continued, you know, fudging all the numbers and basically given the win to the player character, but they didn't. They made a single correction, and after that, let the player's action and the luck of the dice determine the rest. On average, I fudge anywhere from zero to two dice rolls a session, and our sessions run about eight hours long, so this is not really a common thing that I do, and if you're only doing a four-hour session, then you should probably be doing less than I am. I can go several sessions where I don't need to fudge a single thing at all, or I might just have that one where my dice are just supernaturally terrible and they're not really making for a good game, and I need to go ahead and overrule them in order to keep the game interesting. Dice aren't storytellers. They're tools that are used to tell a story. But the Game Master's priority should never be to the rules or to the dice, it's to the players, and giving the players what makes the best stories. I say that the dice should be adhered to strictly, but it's the Game Master's job to interpret those dice however they see best. That's a common sentiment, and I do like it. And that's where we enter the world of failing forward. What this means is when a player character fails, the Game Master just doesn't go with the worst possible outcome for it, but instead it sort of turns it into a setback that can still be overcome, or gives a means of allowing the player characters to still save themselves. The most common example that people give for this is, let's say you have a pit. Maybe it's a pit trap or a ravine that the characters have to cross, but the character attempts to cross it and fails. Instead of falling to their death into a pool of boiling acid or something, the Game Master says that the player character is now hanging on the edge by their fingertips and allows them to make a strength check or something more in order to pull themselves up and save themselves. However, let's say that that player character then fails the next roll. The Game Master doesn't want them to fall to their death, so maybe they just have their weapon fall out of its sheath or its holster and goes tumbling away, so now they've lost their weapon, but they still haven't fallen inside themselves. Then another player attempts to help them out, but they fail too. And now we have two player characters dangling from the side. This scenario could just go on and on, but the problem arises is when the players realize that no matter what they do or how badly they roll, that they are never ever Ever going to fall into that pit. So failing forward is a great concept, I do recommend it, and I might do a later video on that subject entirely. However, like with anything, the promised threat, if the player characters fail, must always exist. You should never take that away from them. 
Once the players realize that you as a game master are always going to be pulling strings behind the screen to uh, ensure that they never fail, that they always have to have some sort of success, and that these obstacles that the PCs have been encountering are no more than just mere annoyances or minor setbacks than being real threats, the player's enjoyment is going to weaken. Does the player want their character to fall to their death? No, of course they don't. Does the game master want the player character to fall to their death? No, probably not. But the fudge, the act of giving him that second or maybe even a third chance, must eventually yield to the threat if they continue failing their roles. Because what the players want even less than losing their character or having their character get seriously injured is to realize that all of their accomplishments so far have been completely meaningless because failure was only an illusion to begin with. A lot of game masters whose hearts really are in the right place will make this mistake. And failing forward is just a different kind of fudging. It's a tool that's in your Game Master toolbox, and like any tool that's in that toolbox, it should never be overused. Because the long-term damage that that can cause if you overuse it can be worse than the immediate damage that you're trying to avoid. When should I fudge? Well, the same as before. That's up to you and your situation. As I said, fudging should never be more than a minor correction rather than being your default Game Master style. So let's say you're doing a combat and your players are slashing their way through hordes of goblins or orcs or whatever, and you realize that they're having too easy of a time with that, but you've already used up all of your opponents. Then have a few more bad guys come rushing into the fight. Those opponents never existed until you decided that you needed them, but you do because the players aren't feeling challenged. Or maybe they're just enjoying that fight scene and they want it to keep going. Maybe you beef a couple of them up a little bit, make them a little bit tougher, give them a few extra hit points or a better chance to hit. Maybe they do a d8 instead of a d6. Or uh, maybe you could tone them down a little bit, but now you've got a lot more of them. So now you've got a lot more bad guys, but they're a little bit weaker than the ones they fought. That way the PC is going to have a ton of fun just, you know, murdering tons and tons of bad guys. Or if a combat starts going poorly for the players, you might you know, realize you've made it a little bit too difficult for them when you were writing it out beforehand, or maybe the player's dice just aren't working well that day, or maybe the combat scene is just going on a little bit too long and it's beginning to lose everybody's attention because if a fight scene goes on too long, it starts becoming boring no matter what's going on. Then maybe you can start toning down the number of the bad guys or start toning down a little bit of their strength. Now they got a little bit less hit points than before. Or maybe it's a little bit harder for them to hit the PCs than it was before or that way we can get through them a lot quicker. Or maybe they could just start uh, failing their morale rolls and some of them start running away and leaving the fight. That way we don't have to deal with them. Personally, I'm more inclined to give a fudge benefit to my player if my player is really going for it. You know, they're being creative or my group is all working together or they just make that one roll that was good but not quite good enough, uh, such as they got that amazing hit in versus the bad guy, but they were just shy of killing the bad guy by one or two hit points, even though they did this amazing hit. I'll probably go ahead and let them kill the bad guy because that, that definitely deserved a little bit of a plus. Or if the next player in initiative order really hasn't had their moment in the sun for this session, and the player that got that really good hit, you know, they've had several moments in the sun this game, I might go ahead and allow that bad guy to live and uh, or maybe give that bad guy one or two hit points if they were killed. That way the next player in initiative order has a chance of hitting the bad guy, and if they do, they're the one that gets to have that killing shot, and they get to be excited by that. So it's always going to be case by case, just depending on uh, what's going on in the game and all the other other factors about that. So there's no real easy formula that I could tell you about, you know, when you should do it or, you know, how you should do it every single time. The key is learning to read the room and your specific players that you have as far as what you think they're going to enjoy more. Remember that overall success or overall failure by your players is not the key to enjoyment. Failure usually gives us the best stories that we like talking about later on, while a victory that doesn't feel earned just isn't that enjoyable. So you must always keep that in mind whenever you're deciding as a game master whether you should fudge a situation or not. What if my players learn that I fudge? Well, again, this is all case by case. Some players go insane at the thought of fudging. Maybe they just want the purity of the dice, or maybe they mistakenly believe that all fudging is cheating, or that you're going to try to work against them and try to sabotage them, or that you're going to remove all the risk entirely from the game. Most players, at least in my own experience, are fine with the idea that the game master will fudge if they're doing it sparingly and they're doing it well. An illusionist tells you up front that they're going to lie to you when they walk out on stage. They're like, hey, I'm just going to lie to you 
idea, and I'm going to trick you, but a great illusionist is one that can do it and not tell you exactly when they're doing it and won't tell you how they did it. My players know that I fudge. Hell, I'm making a video right now telling the whole world that I'll fudge in my games. But my players also trust that I'm never going to abuse that, or I'm going to hide it from them as I'm doing it. They also have no doubt that the risk that their character's fate are actually quite real, and I will fulfill that promise if they fail. After my original video on this subject and all the feedback that I got, I started rolling my dice out in the open for all the players to see, which is pretty easy for me to do. I keep my Game Master screen off to the side, so I was just rolling in front of me. It was actually easier to do than turning and rolling it behind my screen. And at first, my players really enjoyed that I was doing that. But after a while... Hey brother, can you go back to rolling behind the GM screen? I think I like that better. So now I'm about 50-50 if I roll my dice in front of my players. Again, it depends on my exact mood at that moment, whether I'm going to just kind of roll it on the table in front of me or just turn and do it behind my screen. But one big thing, though, is when it comes to dramatic fights, like that big boss or that really dramatic moment where everybody's been beaten down and one hit is going to finally kill anybody that's on the board, at that time, I go ahead and I always roll it in front of them. And I don't mean, like, in front of me where the players that are closest to me can kind of lean over and see what I roll, but, like, no, I, like, throw it out in the middle of the table, that way it's directly in front of everybody. And this is something that I have always done just because I think it leads to really great drama. But I think that a game master should be open to their players about the fact that they fudge, just not open about when they're fudging. It's kind of like when I was in high school, my parents knew what I was up to, it's not like I was fooling anybody, but the unspoken agreement was pretty much that they not see some of the stuff that I was doing. So you probably don't need to make some sort of big production of saying, I'm a game master who will fudge, like it's some sort of dark secret, but just don't pretend that you don't. Well, I say that if a game master cheats, then a player can too. Again, that's a common sentiment. However, let's look at the motivation. If the game master is doing it to gain some sort of advantage against the players or compete with them, that's when it is cheating and therefore wrong. Otherwise, it's not. But a player doing it with a statement like that, if a game master is going to fake their dice rolls, then I should be able to too, that's clearly a motivation of self, which means that it's cheating and therefore wrong. We'll explore player cheating in another video entirely at some later date. But as far as game masters, if the GM is intending to cheat in order to gain some sort of edge over the players by changing stuff around with them behind the screen, then the players have a bigger issue and a bigger problem at hand than is simply what the dice said. The fudging is a symptom of the problem, it's not the actual problem itself. One of the biggest ingredients to a successful tabletop group is trust. Everyone needs to trust one another. So while a game master might fudge the numbers from time to time, the players need to trust that they're keeping it in the spirit of the game. This requires that everybody has an open dialogue. So players, if you know your game master is fudging and you don't like it, either because they're doing it wrong or just because you don't like the idea of fudging, then just simply talk to your game master. Game masters, if one of your players is adamant that they don't want any GM fudging at all and you explain your reasonings to them why you want to, but they're still all like, nope, either because they had a bad experience or they just want the purity of the game or they don't trust that you're not going to screw them over or whatever it is, listen to what your players want. If you tell your player that you're not going to fudge, then don't fudge. Or if you still decide that, hey, I heard what you had to say, but I'm still going to do it, just be ready for whatever blowback that comes your way. But don't tell them that you're not going to fudge and then do it anyway. However, on a personal note, if your player or one of your players is mistrusting, they're likely still going to accuse you of fudging any time that the dice or the luck seems to swing one way or the other, whether you're fudging or not. You have a great run of rolls, then they're going to say that you're fudging the dice to screw them over. Or if you have a run of bad rolls behind the screen, then they're going to tell you that you're fudging the dice in order to get them off easy. Again, if your group lacks trust, then you have a much bigger problem at hand than just simply fudging. I've played under some game masters who fudge badly, and this was primarily due to man, misjudging what the difficulties were and then overcorrecting it once they realized that they'd made a mistake, and we all felt that our wins were just being handed to us and we didn't really get the full satisfaction of our accomplishments. I've never faulted a GM for fudging, I just always considered that to be part of the game, but I do fault them for bad fudging. I've used it too much before, and for the exact same reason. I'd misjudge the difficulty, and the PCs would be getting themselves in trouble or a bad situation that I caused, and then I would fudge the dice or fudge the numbers, and I'd overcorrect it, so now I just made a bad problem worse. But as a game master gets better at gauging the game, gauging their specific players, but also their players get better at approaching obstacles or knowing all their characters' abilities and skills, Game Masters don't really need to debate whether they should fudge or not that much because it's just not necessary.
necessary anymore. So again, Game Masters, there's nothing wrong with fudging. As long as your intentions are good and you do it minimally and sparingly, and you're honest with everybody that this is something that you're going to do. Or if you decide not to fudge, that's also perfectly fine. All that matters is that you and your players are having fun. And as long as everybody in the room is having fun, then you're doing it right. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, such as Game Master Toolbox and game reviews, just hit that subscribe button. Till next time, amigos, y'all have a great day. I'm supposed to keep this up.